Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting things, and I know it's been a couple of days, but what happened at UK Pro must be addressed. We gotta talk about this. So I saw the scorecard of this show. I don't know if you guys caught this, but what happened here was extremely weird. I never saw anything like this ever, basically. So I highlighted the, the top three guys, and also Patrick Moore, who, by the way, took sixth, not eighth, sixth. But we're not going to talk about Patrick Moore in this video. We're going to talk about the top three guys, Bruno Santos, Andrea Presti, and Louis Breed. And they placed in this order, one, two, and three. But check out this uh, very interesting scoring. So at the pre-judging, Andrea Presti was winning with nine points. Louis Breed was actually second with ten points. And at twelve points, you have Bruno Santos. So Bruno Santos was decisively third after the pre-judging. And then at the finals, a couple of hours later, literally, Bruno Santos got a perfect score. And Andrea Presti was firmly in second and Luis Brito was firmly in third. How the hell did this even happen? I mean, did the whole judging panel switch after the pre-judging? No, no, that's not the case. All the judges changed their mind. Most of them thought Bruno Santos was third after the pre-judging, and then a couple of hours later, they all thought basically Bruno Santos was winning. So he got a perfect score in the finals, and he won the show. Now, I'm definitely not saying that there was a robbery, that Bruno Santos was not supposed to win. I can definitely see arguments for him winning. I can also see arguments for Andrea Presti winning. And I can also see Louis Breed placing second, so the results of the pre-judging are accurate, if you ask me, and also the final results are fine with me, but the way this went down is extremely strange. Did Bruno Santos somehow improve dramatically in those couple of hours? <laughs> well, let's take a look at these videos once again. So this is pre-judging. I mean, take a look at it. Basically, yeah, Bruno Santos wasn't in the best shape here, but he was the most complete guy. You know, he had legs, he had aesthetics, he had a very good, nice frame, nice structure, a lot of muscle. Like, Louis Breed, not the prettiest structure, good conditioning, good size. Uh, under a Presti, great conditioning, a lot of muscle, but weak legs. And so you can say that Bruno Santos had uh, the least flaws. But here is the finals. Did Bruno Santos really improve his conditioning dramatically? for the finals, or did the other two guys fade? No, I don't think so, I think Andrea Presti was even better at the finals, but yeah, it was pretty much the same, I mean, how much can you change in two hours, right? You can't really change much, you can do better posing maybe, you can put maybe better tan, more like glaze, stuff like that, like present yourself a little bit better, but like to go from third to first, to go from clearly third to a perfect score for first, that, that just, I don't know, I don't know how can they explain this. So I wanted to share this with you guys and hear your thoughts on this. Hopefully somebody with authority will explain what happened, like uh, Tyler Mannion maybe. I think he wasn't there to judge it, but maybe he heard some sort of explanation. I think we need an explanation because this really doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense at all, honestly. But it is what it is. You guys give me your thoughts down below in the comment section. Ask and shall receive. By the way, where is that quote from? Anyways, yesterday I made a video about Derek and his physique update, basically it was his back, he was training his rear delts and uh, the top comment on my video from yesterday was that Derek's updates have become boring because he's always showing his back and he is rarely, if ever, showing his like conditioning, his uh, arms, legs, abs, chest and there is basically thousands of videos of his uh, back and I absolutely agree with this even though his back is absolutely nuts and I don't mind seeing it as often as possible still as far as talking about Derek and him potentially winning the Mr. Olympia again or placing wherever at the Mr. Olympia we gotta see more and I don't know if Derek saw this comment he probably didn't but maybe he did and that's why he posted this video yesterday and it's a video of his uh, front upper body it's not much, I know, he's not really fully in a pose, he's just sitting there and he's just flexing his chest, doing sort of a most muscular, but you can still get a pretty good idea of what his conditioning is going to be as far as his front upper body, which is basically his biggest problem area, that and legs, maybe legs even more so. And also the lighting is basically as good as it can get, like this is the best lighting to hide all your flaws, 
to really exaggerate all the all the all the lines, all the definition, all the all the cuts uh, on your physique. And yeah, I know Derek is all about finding that perfect lighting, but who is to blame him? I mean, this gym has awesome lighting. He's just training there, took his shirt off and flexed a little. So it is what it is. You get what you get. And as far as his conditioning right now, at four weeks out, as far as his front upper body, well, I gotta say, it's matching. His conditioning from the front is matching his conditioning from behind this time around. I don't think he's any fatter or like more watery. Maybe there aren't as many details in his chest and shoulders uh, than they are on his back, but I'm definitely seeing progress. I'm definitely seeing more details. Maybe last year it looked the same at this point in prep and under the same lighting, but I don't think so. I don't think he had his details in his upper chest and his shoulders. I think he made progress in that regard. Uh, did he gain a lot more muscle? No, but that's not what he needed to do. He needed to work on details and maybe gain some more muscle in the quads and maybe his arms. That's about it. But does he really have to gain more size? Not really. What he really needs is more details to ensure that he's going to win the Mr. Olympia again. However, we'll see, like once he steps on the stage, how much did he truly improve? It also depends on what kind of conditioning he brings, but I'm pretty sure he's going to peak right, having a uh, Hunter Rambo in his corner. So we'll see if he actually made that progress, but from what I'm seeing here, it feels like he did. It looks like he did. Do you guys see it as well? Tell me down below. Alright, what we got next is very, very interesting as well. It is basically a physique update from Chris Bumstead, and this time around he's doing a man's physique poses. And we always talk about how well would he do if he did the open, but now we can talk about how well would he do if he competed in man's physique. Just kidding, we're not gonna talk about that, not seriously. But what I'm seeing here is like a lot of people say that man's physique guys today are just as big as classy guys, but they don't have the legs. And as you can see right here, that's definitely not the case. Classic physique guys are definitely a lot bigger than the men's physique guys if we're talking about a top Olympia level. Of course, there are a lot of uh, classic physique guys, maybe even classic physique pros, who are smaller than the men's physique uh, Olympians. But if we talk about the top Olympians in men's physique versus top Olympians in classic physique, Classic physique guys are definitely bigger, not to mention legs. I mean, of course, the legs are usually twice the size of the men's physique guys, but upper body, there is also a size discrepancy. As you can see right here, Chris is definitely way too big for men's physique. I'm not saying he would do poorly. He would still do pretty well, I'm sure, because he's so aesthetic. Even though his arms are not that great and like his abs are not the deepest with that wide chest, I mean, he would do decently. But like he's still a little bit too thick for man's physique. He will still have to be a little bit uh, more more slender, right? His waist should be smaller, and like his uh, his arms should be smaller, and even his shoulders and chest, everything is just a little bit too big. But why are we even analyzing this? I mean, he's definitely not switching to man's physique. He's just uh, fooling around here, and yeah, he's doing this pose actually surprisingly well. However, let's talk about his physique as far as the classic physique, Mr. Olympia, because here, even though this is a man's physique pose. You can also see what is going on, what he looks like. He did not reveal much from his physique during this prep. This is basically the first like physique update, a proper physique update. And even though he's doing a man's physique pose, you can get an idea what he's gonna look like in the front relaxed. So does he look any worse than last year? Like, are there any new injuries? Any new imbalances? I don't see them here. He looks very symmetrical, very proportionate, very clean, right? He has good conditioning for four weeks out, just on time. He's big, he's big enough, this is your usual Chris Bumstead. Now, since this year is going to probably be his last Mr. Olympia appearance, since he's retiring after he turns 30, which is early uh, next year, he might push things a little bit further this year, just to make sure that his last edition is his all-time best. Is that going to be the case? It's very possible, I can definitely see it. At this point, it's all about how conditioned he gets and how well he peaks, but can he really get better than the 2022 Mr. Olympia? I mean, that first Mr. Olympia with Hunter Rambert, I mean, I don't think he can get much better than that. If he can replicate that, show up exactly the same, with the same peak, same conditioning, I think that would be phenomenal. That would be great for his last Mr. Olympia. But 
you know, maybe he actually gets even better because he, he, he was training the entire year. I mean, he can't really gain much, much more muscle, but he can maybe work on details. Maybe he's going to be a little bit more separated, straight through the chest or like through the back or like legs, glutes. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe he's going to bring like more details, more dryness, crispier look. It's possible. And is he going to win the Mr. Olympia? That's the most boring question ever. Of course he's going to win the Mr. Olympia, let's not even talk about that. I mean, yeah, like, he has potentially a challenge from Wesley Wissers, but no, no, I don't think that's gonna happen. At this point, honestly, I feel like Ramon Dino is most likely going to be second, and Wesley third. And in fourth, right now, I actually don't have neither Brian nor Urs. I think it's gonna be Stefan Matala, if he truly brings it. And then you're gonna have Urs or Brian in the top five. And that's the way I see it right now. Whatever your thoughts are, guys, tell me down below. Oh, and finally, we got this new photo from Rubial Mosquera, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, why the hell didn't he show up at UK and Italy Pro? If he just did a little peak week, I mean, he would still be extremely good. I don't know how troublesome that is for him, but if he showed up, I mean, I'm not saying he would win 100%, maybe not against Hunter Labrada, but against uh, Bruno Santos, Andrea Presti, and Luis Breed, he would have most likely won that show, and he would have qualified for the Mr. Olympia, but I guess... He didn't want to do the Mr. Olympia this year. And that's up to him. It's his choice. We, as fans, we can only watch what these guys do. We can't demand them to compete if they don't want to compete. But I'm looking at this and I'm seeing, and I'm definitely thinking he could have done well. You know, if he's conditioned like this right now. You know, it was basically, if you ask me, one peak week. Or if he, let's say, pushed for two weeks before the show and tried to get a little bit leaner he would have still done very well, because here, I mean, look at him. I mean, I'm not saying he made any improvements from the Dubai Pro, I mean, size-wise, of course, it was too short of a time, but, you know, conditioning, it's spot on, and he has the fullness, the size, it seems like he didn't step off the cycle, he's still blasting, he's still doing whatever it takes to get ready for the Prague Pro, I mean, it looks like that. I mean, he and his coach, Francisco Aspin, they actually said that the plan is now to do the Prague Pro, but who the hell knows what are the true plans of Nexila? He, as you guys know, has a tendency to pull out of shows, so we have no idea what his plans are truly, but officially it is Prague Pro, and Prague Pro is actually in only like 10-ish weeks from now, so he doesn't have time to go off, to relax, he needs to keep pushing, you know, to improve conditioning wise maybe like work on some details but mainly like to to prime his body to be able to be shredded for that day and if he does that and if samson daura doesn't compete again he's going to win that show and qualify for the mr olympic 2025 i believe that's gonna happen if you guys think otherwise tell me down below in the comment section whatever your thoughts are guys on this video make sure to comment down below if you guys enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more subscribe if you want to support me a little bit you can buy hostile supplements just make sure to use the code even 10 and you also get a 10 percent discount thank you guys once again so much for watching see you soon all the best and bye bye